Thanks for checking out Sortly. In today's video, we're going to talk about the two main ways you should set up your Sortly inventory, whether that's for consumption tracking or asset tracking. Now, the first way we're going to take a look at Sortly for consumption tracking would be for this electrical company. Now, at a high level, we have two high level folders, one for our available inventory. This is going to be all of our inventory items that we can pull from. We also have a secondary folder here, which is an out slash jobs folder. This specifically is going to be a way for us to track items as they're allocated to different job sites, locations, van numbers, or individuals. Now in this case, you can see that we have a couple different fields set up or folders already set up within our application. Um, so we're going to walk through how we could assign items or show consumption of those items. Now in this case, you can click on the drop down here and I'm going to go into my light fixtures folder, which has all of the items and the inventory that I can play around with. Now in this case, if I want to allocate items from the available inventory to a specific job site, I can simply hover over the item and hit move to a folder, and that's going to move that item to the destination that I would like. I can also do this in bulk by simply selecting multiple items at once, and then hitting the move function to then allocate multiple items at one time to a desired location in this setup here. Now there's other ways that you can make adjustments to your items just by increasing or decreasing the quantity, and this will also show as consumption, but if you're trying to move them or allocate them to a job site, you'll want to use the move function here. Now the other option that we can work with is going to be around asset tracking, and specifically in this example, let's assume that you're going to be assigning items to a specific individual, such as like a laptop or IT equipment, that you're expecting them to have to perform their daily tasks. So in this case, we have kind of a similar setup. One is for our inventory, and then we have an employees folder to allocate the items to a specific employee. So if I click into the inventory folder here, I'm going to be able to see all of the items that are available for me to kind of allocate to employees as they are onboarded or as things break and they may need replacements. So in this case, I have a laptops folder or a laptop subfolder within the asset tracking folder. This laptops folder specifically is going to be a way for me to be able to assign specific laptops to individuals. If I click into this folder, you'll notice right off the bat that instead of us using one MacBook Pro with a quantity of 50, I've decided to allocate these to their own individual items. And the reason behind this is there's specific information that is unique to them, such as their MAC address or serial number. When you're working with things such as that, you may want to treat these items as individual items as opposed to one singular item with multiple quantity. It's just going to be easier for you to track and search for those items independently. And you also want to know about that item individually as opposed to as a group as a whole. Now on the inventory side of things, if we jump back into the previous view, we can see that we also have a monitor, a keyboard, a monitor stand, and then a mouse. So on your end, you can click on multiple items at one time, and then you can actually move or allocate these to a specific location. So if I hit the move function here, it's going to then give me the opportunity to select the quantity that I wish to move. I can then select next and then choose where I want to move this item to. So in this case, I'm going to go into the asset tracking folder. I have an employees folder that's set up and I'm going to use my colleague Ben as an example. So I created a folder for Ben. I want to move these items or allocate them to him. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the move button. It's then going to move these items over into that folder specifically in one motion for us, giving us the opportunity there to be able to see what that individual has at any point in time. So if we jump into this employees folder, we're going to see all the current employees that are with the organization. You'll see that the Ben folder has four items associated with it currently, and the Riley folder does as well. If we click into Ben's folder, we're going to be able to see all of the items that have been assigned to Ben. And in this case, we have a monetary value on just the monitor. These smaller things don't currently have any inventory value as of now. So at this point, we know what's assigned to that individual and we can track that moving forward. If there are any issues with those items, um, they can send us back or send them back to us. But this way, the company can know what items are allocated to what employees within the organization. I hope that gives you a little bit better understanding of how to set up either asset tracking or consumption tracking for your use case. As always, if you have any questions about how to set this up or the best business model for you, feel free to reach out to us at support at Thanks again.